and dear colleagues and respected uh, my name is Katerina. I represent European Business Association and lead our Southern Ukrainian office located in Odessa, Ukraine. I do it already for 12 years and it's an honor and a pleasure for me to collaborate with you in exploring international and business opportunities in Ukraine and Cyprus. And it's the main topic of our discussion today, as Denise ma mentioned. Before we start, let me inform you of some organizational moments. Our meeting is recorded and we plan to share this video on Facebook, Facebook during this week. Uh, also, I'll ask all the participants to keep your cameras off and microphones muted for better connection. And at the same time, you can take active part in our Q&A session. So please write your questions to our chat and me or Denise will read them out loud. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'd like to remind our speakers to turn on their cameras and not to forget to turn on their microphones while speaking. Uh, so Denise, let's start. Uh, yes, thank you, Katerina. So I would like to give the floor to the Secretary General of Cyprus Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Myros Tsakis. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Katerina. Good afternoon, everybody. I wish that everybody is safe and healthy. Uh, on behalf of the Cyprus Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I would like to welcome you all to this very interesting online discussion between Cyprus and Ukraine and the business opportunities thereof. Allow me to express my delayed congratulations to the people of Ukraine for their Independence Day on the 24th of August and wish you and your country prosperity, peace, and the fast recovery from this pandemic we are all going through. Uh, I would also like to express my appreciation and thanks to Mrs. Natalia Sirenko, the Charge Affairs of Ukraine to Cyprus, as well as His Excellency Mr. Luis Dilemaco, our Cypriot ambassador in Ukraine, for their participation, and I hope, and I'm sure, for their valuable contribution uh, for setting up this event today and for the discussions to, to follow. Uh, special thanks are also due to our speakers uh, for what I am sure there will be uh, excellent contributions uh, to set the ground for the discussion uh, and, and interesting ideas to follow after their presentations. In the current period, it's very important for all countries to come together and support each other to combat business and economic difficulties. Now more than ever, we must explore all the ways in which we can cooperate and build a strong community and business board. The purpose of this webinar is to promote the strong business relationship between our two countries and set an example that even in these very difficult times where the countries and people are isolated by the pandemic, the business community stays active, well connected, and ready to fight against all the odds. Without any further ado delay, I wish you all, all every success for today's online discussion, and would like to remind you that the Cyprus Chamber of Commerce and Industry, being the most representative business organization in Cyprus, is always at your disposal for any assistance and support you may need uh, in doing business with our business community. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and I look forward to an interesting discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Marius. Katerina? Uh, yes, Denise, I think it's uh, now it's the turn of Mr. Ambassador, so we should give the floor to Mr. Ambassador of Cyprus in Ukraine. Yes, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I hope that you can hear me well. It is indeed with great pleasure that I have accepted to join today's important online meeting. Uh, with the pandemic, this is the way to promote economic diplomacy, which is one of the priorities of the Cyprus Ministry of Foreign Affairs. As an embassy, we are grateful to Cyprus Chamber of Commerce and the Cyprus Ukraine Business Association for organizing this online event. I would like to congratulate them on the initiative and look forward for similar events in the future. Just as a way of introduction, diplomatic relations between the Republic of Cyprus and Ukraine were established on the 19th of February 1992. 
And ever since, the relations between our two countries and our two peoples have indeed flourished. My job as the Cypriot ambassador is to increase even further the level of bilateral cooperation among the governments, the parliament, the business community, the universities, the students, and among the people of our countries. Since 1992, our two governments have signed and ratified a total of 28 treaties and bilateral agreements covering almost all spheres of public interest. There are two pending and in the final stages. So there it is available for our investors. The, the background is there, the legal background is there. Today, Cyprus is the number one foreign investor in Ukraine. Pre-pandemic, there were five different airlines flying to Cyprus from different Ukrainian airports, with 18 scheduled flights per week in the summer season and 12 flights per week during the rest of the year. More than 100,000 Ukrainians have chosen Cyprus as their holiday destination last year. Furthermore, as per today, we have around 40,000 Ukrainian sailors with Cypriot seafarers identification and record books. In addition, in the last five years, more than 9,000 endorsements have been issued by the Cypriot authorities, giving work to thousands of skilled Ukrainian sailors. A number of Ukrainians and Ukrainian companies choose Cyprus as their international business base in order to better reach the Southern European and Middle Eastern markets. Now, come back to the conference today's online meeting. I would like, as from my experience, being an ambassador more than three years, uh, I would like to focus or mention the fields that I see having the greatest potential for uh, the business community. Number one is the headquartering of Ukrainian companies in Cyprus. Number two is more of using of, of the startup visa scheme and to be used more extensively. A cooperation on tertiary education. I'm afraid that we have not attracted the number of students from Ukraine that we should have or we could have. Number four is the cooperation on research and innovation. And number five, increasing in tourism. Looking forward to hearing views of how to develop this further. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Katerina, you have a place. Your microphone is off. <laughs> I forgot the main rule, sorry. Uh, really, uh, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Really, the Republic of Cyprus is becoming an increasingly promising country for business, investment, and life. And it should be noted that we in Ukraine are interested in further deepening bi bilateral relations with Cyprus in order to continue to adopt a positive business experience and uh, thus improve the investment attractiveness of our country in the international arena. Uh, arena. Uh, so let me introduce Ms. Natalia Sirienko, a charge the affairs of the Embassy of Ukraine in Cyprus. Uh, Ms. Natalia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Kalispera Kirias Kikiria, Mr. Marios, Your Excellency Ambassador Tulemako. Good afternoon, dear friends. My warm congratulations to all Cypriot on the occasion of the upcoming anniversary of the independence of the Republic of Cyprus. And it's a great pleasure to open, to open this event today. I would like to start by wishing you and your families health and safety in these difficult times. We must remember this shall pass too. We will get through this. Getting past the pandemic quickly depends on us, acting now and acting together. The significant conjunction of interests, mutual support, and what most importantly, mutual trust and openness give us the firm basis for the confidence in dependable future on the relations between Ukraine and Cyprus. There is clear mutual political will and interests in further expanding and diversifying this bilateral cooperation. And we have to make use of every opportunity and platform available in order to promote economic and trade cooperation between our countries, in spite of the ongoing COVID pandemic, and its negative impact on the economies of both countries. Ukraine is considerably interested in promotion of bilateral projects in the spheres of agriculture, standardization and metrology, transport, energy, pharmaceuticals, tourism, and so on. 
special importance is given to the development of our cooperation in high-tech and IT sphere. Despite Russian aggression, Ukraine has largely maintained its democratic reforms thanks to its strength and determination to decide its own future and support of international community. And we are grateful to Cyprus for support of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Ukrainian authorities built even rules for all, cleanse the judicial system, digitalize process, implement important reforms and adopt important laws. Ukraine is very attractive for tourists and businessmen and it's open to investors. We have a favorable climate conditions, very advantageous geographic location, inexhaustible agrarian and industrial potential, and very talented people. So my key message today is that we stand to support business community of both countries to establish strong and mutually beneficial cooperation. Dear friends, today's discussion is organized online. That has become the new normal for meetings and interacting with our counterparts. So we need to take opportunities to strengthen cooperation between Ukraine and Cyprus to bring benefits for business and society at large. I believe today's meeting will expand horizons for Cypriot business with positive practices in Ukraine that will give an extra boost in our economic relations to establish new ties, to promote further mutually beneficial cooperation between our country. I thank the, the Cyprus Chamber of Commerce and Industry and European Business Association of Ukraine for supporting our initiative and organizing today's discussion, highlighting the opportunities and benefits of further Ukrainian Cypriot relationship. And I hope that such meetings will become traditional. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time. A very warm welcome to each and every one of you and special thanks of our moderators Ms. Katerina and Mr. Denis. Thank you very much. Um, so, Mrs. Katerina, would you like to start with the main dish and announcing the first topic? Yes, yeah, thank you, Ms. Natalia. Thank you, Denise. Uh, yes, now we're, we'll talk about investment potential of Ukraine, and I should manage that increasing the investment attractiveness of Ukraine and its uh, business climate is perhaps the most important strategic goal of the EB activity. In such way, our association conducts a number of surveys to study various areas of the business environment of Ukraine. In particular, we consider the following areas such as investment climate, customs and taxation, judicial system, etc. And uh, thus, the index of investment attractiveness in the first half of 2020 was uh, 2.51 points of 5 possible and continues to be in the negative plane. These are the conclusions of the latest wave of the expert research conducted by the European Business Association together with the law firm Vasil and Kisilin partners. Uh, in addition to the traditional problems that negatively affect the business climate, such as the weak judiciary, the lack of progress in the, fight, in the fight against corruption and the significant impact of the shadow economy, the new factors have been indicated, in particular the introduction of restrictive measures uh, through COVID-19, uh, constant rotations in the government and as a result political and economic instability, increasing tax pressure and changes in tax legislation and so on. Uh, although the assessment of the dynamics of the business climate uh, indicates a negative trend in general, uh, thus 55% of directors notice a deterioration in the investment climate compared to the previous six months. Another 35% are convinced that the business environment has not changed and the last 10% believe that it have improved in some way. Among the positive points uh, which were noted uh, by business leaders over the past six months are uh, the launch of the land market, currency liberalization, uh, continued cooperation with the International Monetary Fund and uh, lowering the discount of 
uh, rate of the National Bank of Ukraine, stable currency, etc. Uh, so the next speaker will uh, reveal the issue of Ukraine's investment attractiveness and provide a brief uh, description of, of how to start a business in Ukraine. So uh, Ms. Irina Vaivodina, partner of the law firm Interlegal in Odessa, I invite you to our discussion. Uh, hello, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to exchange uh, some experience with you and uh, I will share now uh, my presentation. Uh, so uh, today I'll talk more about uh, just in general the business climates, what uh, changes have been uh, recently made and uh, my colleagues uh, already uh, described some industries, uh, key sectors uh, that uh, are um, quite attractive in Ukraine. Uh, just for the start, a few words about our company. Uh, we are interlegal based in Ukraine with a specialization transport, shipping and trade. And uh, we are focused on uh, the Black Sea region and have uh, six offices uh, in the Black Sea and uh, have a number of associated offices uh, so we can provide service uh, worldwide. Uh, so, uh, regarding the investment client, uh, the investment um, climate in Ukraine, the key sectors, uh, uh, yes, the colleagues already uh, introduced that agribusiness is quite uh, uh, an industry for Ukraine. Uh, some of our clients, they just say that if you want to start a new business in Ukraine, just go to agricultural business and that's it. And of course, uh, I would like to underline the innovation technologies. Uh, it was a, uh, it shows a quite an extensive, uh, constant uh, growth, uh, thirty percent each year, and uh, about one hundred fifty thousand uh, new specialists uh, are graduating every year. Uh, and uh, as for human capital, mm, uh, from experience, just my personal. Uh, from around uh, people, I can state that, uh, of course, the shifting of uh, uh, beautiful minds uh, continues uh, going abroad. But anyway, uh, we can see a great decrease of numbers uh, of uh, Ukrainian young people. Uh, they even come back uh, from abroad uh, from their studies and they just start their life in Ukraine, which is a good sign and which is a sign that Ukraine uh, moves forward. Uh, as for business climate, of course, I can say that improvements are made and uh, the law uh, reforms are being in progress. Um, for example, uh, there was a, a, a very significant law on uh, a currency uh, last year adopted and we started the currency liberalization. Uh, Ukraine was uh, always uh, uh, the last stages regarding the currency limitations. Now we are starting to cut these limitations uh, and good sign. Anti-corruption instruments and uh, laws, uh, they do work and uh, uh, at least a uh, number of uh, laws, uh, uh, the tax have been adopted. And of course, the, this year is remarkable as for adoption of the law on uh, land market liberalization. Uh, the uh, market, uh, we can say that it will be opened uh, in 2021 uh, for natural persons and uh, uh, starting uh, 2024 for legal entities. The new law of concession uh, is, of course, uh, another stage uh, for improvement of uh, uh, business climate in Ukraine and for the opportuni good opportunities of involvement of uh, private uh, funds uh, into private and public uh, partnerships. And uh, new companies law, well, it's not really new, it's about two years, uh, but it was a good state, uh, a stage uh, for improvement of conditions uh, for corporate issues and uh, providing new instruments for regulating the partnership relations and uh, so on. And of course, uh, since Ukraine is moving towards the European Union, uh, there was a very significant law adopted uh, in May, uh, which uh, implements the BEPS standards on de We say this law is de law number 
uh, for all 60, not uh, in Russian, I can <laughs> say. Okay, and of course, the digitalization direction, uh, which means uh, also digitalization in administration, in tax administration. Uh, of course, uh, there is also much to be done, uh, but anyway, uh, certain steps have been done. Uh, regarding the establishment, uh, you can see the stages of establishment accompanying Ukraine. Uh, so, first of all, as about in all countries, the LLC form uh, is the most commonly used. Of course, there are there is a form of representative office, uh, but still all uh, about all investors, they end with the LLC company. Uh, so, any nationality is uh, acceptable for a uh, shareholder, no problem with that. Opening bank account, the next stage uh, is uh, quite uh, uh, easy now procedure. Anyway, director is needed uh, for the as a personal um, meeting with the bank, and uh, uh, of course, it's necessary to understand that Ukraine is not an offshore uh, jurisdiction. Uh, the company should have an address, uh, the uh, office, uh, so it will be necessary to rent uh, some office uh, or purchase uh, purchase it. Uh, regarding the employment issues, it should be noted that the first director should be probably the local director or a foreigner with a work permit in Ukraine. So it's also the issue when establishing business in Ukraine for foreign investors. Uh, this investment in business, of course, in order to start uh, just to invest some funds uh, for the first uh, years before the company is profitable, uh, the way of uh, um, share capital uh, or loans, uh, this is just the way how to invest uh, for the first years. And uh, as uh, an instrument, as I mentioned, we have a new company's law that provides a good instrument, a shareholders agreement for regulating uh, the uh, partnership uh, relations and uh, uh, Ukrainian business lacked very much the uh, foreign structures with the English law for shareholders agreement. Now we can compete, uh, Ukrainian law, we can say compete in this uh, regard as well. And of course, uh, just to protect uh, IP rights and uh, trademark uh, or copyright, uh, we suggest uh, registration uh, of uh, IP rights. And uh, uh, it is an option in Ukraine and uh, uh, an option to register from Ukraine uh, uh, for IP rights that will be valid worldwide. Uh, just an example of uh, uh, budget uh, of establishing business in Ukraine uh, because it's one of advantages uh, it's not so costly uh, to establish business as you can see office rent uh, just ten dollars uh, per meter just an example you can view it uh, from here uh, and uh, about taxation, uh, we have uh, general taxation and simplified taxation. General taxation is uh, 18 corporate profit tax and VAT 20, just an average as in Europe. And uh, simplified taxation uh, is uh, uh, kind of optimization in Ukraine and most uh, small business and every business uh, uh, uses uh, unified taxation, uh, which is uh, especially in IT sector. Uh, my colleague will talk more about it uh, uh, later. Uh, so uh, simplified taxation uh, is uh, just one of the advantages, I would say, of Ukraine. Uh, of course, uh, there are some um, like pushing uh, um, from state and from Ukraine uh, as for limiting these opportunities, uh, but still uh, it is needed at the moment uh, at the moment for Ukraine, I would say. Uh, um, that's probably it from my side. Uh, I would just I, I think I'm running all the time. Uh, just uh, to summarize that uh, uh, this year and uh, the year before, we can say that it's the year of reforms uh, from the uh, legal point. We even have uh, the jokes uh, from with our own colleagues just stop, stop doing it because uh, business and uh, um, business needs time to 
uh, just to, to move forward and to understand to what to do, just to analyze the uh, changes. Uh, but still, it's a, it's a good thing that these reforms are being made because uh, we can say that business is hurt in uh, most uh, cases and uh, uh, the uh, law reforms is the first stage, yes, and then uh, the second stage, uh, yes, uh, the second stage is uh, the dialogue between uh, um, uh, between the state and the business, uh, so uh, the law could be uh, implemented in the right way. Uh, thank you. I think uh, I tried to just to make it short, uh, and it was uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Irina, for your uh, part, uh, for the beautiful presentation and updates on the uh, Ukrainian and Ukrainian law and tax. Uh, next to the floor, I invite uh, Mrs. Alina Kulikowska. She will uh, talk as well on the topic of um, doing business in Cyprus. Mrs. Alina, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, please let me know, can you hear me, can you see me, everything is correct, everything is okay? Yes, we can see you and hear you. Okay, um, okay. one more time uh, to, to participate in such a nice event, in a webinar session. And um, my name is Elena Kulikoska, I'm a business development manager in in the sovereign group, just a couple of words about our company. Uh, we are an international corporate service provider, a company with a big name with 26 offices all over the world and more than 30 years of experience in doing business, in corporate services and in tax planning. Um, I'm presenting Cyprus office, as you understood. Originally, I'm from Ukraine. I'm a Ukrainian lawyer and um, I'm a lawyer who knows not only and who has experience to work not only in Ukrainian law firms but also in international law firms. So I pretty good and pretty well know what Ukrainian business is looking for and what Cyprus and other businessmen, foreign businessmen, uh, businessmen are looking in Ukraine in their business. But today my presentation will be about Cyprus. Uh, some brief information about Cyprus business, how to do business, some advantages, and just believe me, not everyone is aware of those services and um, those advantages with which Cyprus has. So, some brief information that Cyprus is uh, not a big island uh, in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. Uh, it has a perfect geographic location. It's a member of the European Union. 2004 and a member of European Zone since 2008. Cyprus has friendly infrastructure for a business. Uh, English language is a widely used as the main business language, but one of the big advantage of Cyprus is the legal system, which is based on the English law, make it very uh, effective and suitable for entrepreneurs from all over the world. Um, Cyprus offers a very nice bank system and a perfect uh, professional services system. So basically, uh, you can get here services in accounting and business consulting, IT services, perfect educational, engineering and legal services for your business. Um, Cyprus uh, has introduced investment scheme. The third country nationals who want to invest in property buyers can invest in business in projects, in property, in different funds, and to get citizenship or residency here in Cyprus. In addition, Cyprus is offering redemisciation services to the business outside of Cyprus, which allows companies to be redemisciled into Cyprus and to get a lot of benefits uh, from taxation. Because as we know, Cyprus is a very nice country and jurisdiction for uh, tax purposes. And this is the main advantages uh, of the Cyprus tax system. Uh, Cyprus is a low tax jurisdiction. Please don't think that Cyprus still is offshore jurisdiction. It's a low tax jurisdiction with a 12.5% corporate tax rate. Um, Cyprus has no withholding tax on dividends and um, there is no withholding tax on dividends paid from Cyprus companies to non-residents. Uh, dividends received in Cyprus companies 
uh, from foreign companies um, are not subject to defense tax. There is no tax on sale of shares. There is no capital gain tax. Uh, Cyprus has signed a lot of treaties for double taxation. There, there is 65 treaties for today signed by Cyprus. Cyprus is a part of European Union VAT system, which allows companies who would like to trade within the European Union uh, to get a lot of advantages. And Cyprus has a preferable IP regime, which we'll be talking today about it because um, we will speak advantages for IT companies. And also, um, Cyprus has a um, very nice uh, program for to getting tax residency in 60 days. I will talk about later. So, Cyprus and Ukraine, is, they started their relationship for, like, in since Ukraine was a part of the Soviet Union. And for now, um, Cyprus and Ukraine, they have signed an active double tax treaty, which was signed in 2012. But in 2019, came into force a new protocol signed between Cyprus and Ukraine, and starting from 1st January 2020, there is some uh, amendments to the double tax agreement. So on this slide, you can see some additional information how Cyprus companies can be used in combination with Ukrainian company. You can see in the bottom Ukrainian company, which is owned by can be owned by Cyprus company, and uh, there can be some shareholders or some owner of Cyprus company can be either legal entity or a physical person, beneficial owner of the company. How it can be done, how it can be used. So basically, a Ukrainian company will be paying tax, will be paying dividends to Cyprus company. And in this case, due to the protocol, a Cyprus, a Ukrainian company will pay 5% withholding tax on dividends. In a case of paying any interest with Cyprus company, Ukrainian company will have 5% withholding tax on interest. And in a case uh, which was increased in the protocol from 2% to 5 And um, in the case of paying uh, royalties, a Ukrainian company will have 5% on royalty. At the same time, Cyprus company, if in a top, will have the UBO, shareholder from Ukraine, uh, Cyprus or any other country, Cyprus company will pay, pay 0% on withholding tax, on dividends, on interest and on royalties. This is, I think, one of the biggest advantages for Ukrainian businessmen. You were talking about Cyprus. Also, Ukrainian businessmen can get a tax residency in Cyprus, which is very nice because um, uh, uh, since 2017, uh, any third national uh, citizens uh, who would like to have a tax residency in Cyprus can get it due to the rule of 60 days. What does it mean? That uh, you can become a Cyprus re tax resident on the basis of a 60 days rule. Uh, the individual must meet all the following conditions. First of all, you can be in Cyprus, stay in Cyprus within 60 days within tax year. Uh, you do not need to reside in any, any other country for a period of more than 183 days. So basically, you don't need to be, uh, you can't be a tax resident of any other country within this period. You, uh, the, you can carry out business activities in Cyprus or work in Cyprus or to be a director in a company that is a tax resident in Cyprus at any time. Uh, of the tax year, um, of the during the current tax year. Um, and obviously, you need to have some premises where you can stay during this season. So, while we're, while we're talking about advantages of this 60 days rule, of this tax residency. So, basically, um, in Cyprus, we have a rule that uh, all the tax residents of Cyprus, they are paying taxes uh, on the worldwide income. But, in a case you are non-domiciled, uh, you have a non-domiciled status, what does it mean that you are not living in uh, Cyprus within the uh, last 17 years? So you can get um, advantage, so you have get exemption to paying taxes here in Cyprus on, divid on receiving dividends worldwide or on receiving any, any passive income. So basically, if I am um, a Ukrainian citizen, 
I am a non-domicile here in Cyprus and I have some business here in Cyprus or outside of Cyprus, I'm getting dividends. I'm not paying uh, my income tax over here in Cyprus. Also, if I have some shares and I would like to sell them, I will not pay uh, taxes on capital gain from selling my shares. If I am as an individual who, who is employed in Cyprus and my salary is more than 100,000 euros per year, I will get a 50% discount for next 10 years on personal income tax. And um, this is, I think that this is a quite good example that Cyprus can become a uh, can become a nice place for those um, uh, for those businessmen who would like to have a business here in Cyprus and who would like to get advantages from uh, to become a type tax resident of Cyprus. And today we're talking about. Um, IP services, we are talking about IT companies and the attraction of Cyprus to such companies, to such type of business. And Cyprus has a very nice IP box regime. What does it mean? Uh, that means that any companies uh, in Cyprus uh, who are holding who are holding of IP, um, IP subject in this case, patent, it's copyright software programs, that's why we're talking about IT companies, because it's very suitable for software programs, for programming, for IT services. If they are holder of if such company, I, the Cypress IP holding company, um, is getting a um, tax exception of 80% on profit gaining from uh, royalties. So basically, as you can see on this slide, uh, there is a Cyprus company, there is some owners, basically owners of IP or owners of the Cyprus company. Cyprus holding uh, IP company um, can lease, so give, uh, to, to lease uh, the IP or any property, IP property software or program to any other companies or physical persons or um, any individuals all over the world and get royalty. Basically, this company, Cyprus company, getting royalty uh, needs to pay taxes. Corporate tax in Cyprus is 12.5%, but due to the IP box regime, a uh, company can get exemption of, of 80% of tax, and in this case, company will pay 2.5%. Uh, so let's take that we have income, the Cyprus Cyprus IP company has income of 100,000 euros and 40,000 of the company, so basically um, the real income uh, of the company uh, from royalties is, uh, uh, is 60,000. From this 60,000 we have 80% of exception. It's 48,000, so basically uh, taxes we will pay from 12,000 uh, 12, euros. So 12,000 euros, we're paying 12.5% taxes, it's 1,500 euros. So basically from 60,000 of pure income, where IP, my IT companies, due to the IP box regime, they will pay 1,500 euros, which is also a big advantage to uh, all the IT companies who are going to uh, create some software, who want to create some apps, which are very right now very popular. Um, and in this case, to use Cyprus, it is the best solution for um, any IT company. Plus, additionally, everyone, every businessman who has a company in Cyprus can get a tax residency, or also will get the, the owners of such companies will get also advantages from um, having business in Cyprus. Um, and uh, I think that uh, all the technical stuff about uh, IT companies of doing business for IT companies so will uh, be uh, shown by my colleagues. So this is it from my side. Thank you, Alina, for your presentation. Mrs. Katerina, 
Alina, thank you for a very interesting overview of uh, key factors of doing business in Cyprus. And um, now we'll talk about uh, another topic. Of, uh, thus, global digitalization is one of the latest trends, and we chose in this topic uh, for today's agenda. And today, IT industry is more united than ever, and working together on useful and innovative initiatives uh, that uh, will really improve the life of uh, IT and other industries, especially in conditions given by the global crisis due to pandemic. Uh, therefore, Roman Korin, Associate Baker McKinsey, Ukraine, is ready to outline the key provisions of the tax regime for the IT industry, uh, the proposed changes in this regime, as well as the scenarios for uh, Responding to anti offshore tax rules. So, Ramon, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Katarina. Let me please have just one moment to, to share my presentation with you. Ramon, is everything okay? We don't see your slides, unfortunately. Technical issues are always going to appear in our world even though we were in 21st century, but the internet is not good enough. <laughs> yes, we need 5G. It's coming. It's coming, hopefully. Roman, you're back. Roman, we cannot hear you, your mark. Yes. On. Sorry, my browser just crashed, but let's try again. And it crashed again. No. Okay. no. Do you see my do you see the presentation? Yes, everything okay. Please make oh. the main slide. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Twenty uh, first century mm -hmm. is not necessarily the, the best century. Okay. Um, uh, dear participants, my name is Roman Koren. I am a tax associate at the key office of Baker McKenzie Law Firm. And I would just, I just wanted to focus today on the Ukrainian tax regime and the most recent developments thereof. And first of all, I just wanted to start with a snapshot of the Ukrainian tax regime. I would not go into the details of the taxes and rates, uh, for it was also covered by my colleagues. But what I wanted to say that different business models employed and utilized by the IT industry in Ukraine, both outbound, and both in terms of outbound models and inbound, uh, they are they are focused on the different on the different taxes and on, on, on the different tax ramifications. For example, the outbound tax services are mostly concerned about the transfer pricing consideration in terms of choosing the right margin, right profitability margin, and also the outbound services uh, 
kind of exposed or prone to permanent establishment risk. While, for example, while in contrast, the licensing structures and software as a services structures, they are likely, they are more prone to withholding tax questions and value added tax questions. For example, in terms of value added tax, the most pressing issues would be the place of supply rules and, and accordingly the applicability of value added tax the applicability of the value added tax exemption on the supply of software products. And the most recent and the, con and the expected development that the Ukrainian government, that the Ukrainian parliament is about to consider is the contemplated uh, business to value added tax regime no, on Roman, sorry, I will interrupt you. Uh, participants write us in the chat that uh, the slide is zoomed or something like that. We don't see the whole page. Uh, it is like cutted. Um, let me try. Sorry. Sorry for interruption. <laughs> uh, no, it's OK. Now it's full, but with the menu. Okay. And now? This is full and the next two is letters might be cutted. Could you put the next slide? Yes, it's a little bit cutted. Mm. I do not know if the issue is with my screen um let me try this um. and how do you see it now? Is it in full mode? Mm, not yet. Um. Let me share the full screen then. Sorry. Oh, now it's the full screen, I think. Yes, yes, now it's everything. Okay, thank you very much. Ali, thank you. So, um, and the, as I said, the most recent and the most uh, viewed, the, the most viewed development would be the introduction of the value added tax regime on electronically supplied services to, in the B2C model. In other words, the prov providers of electronic services provided to Ukrainian individuals would be required to charge 20% Ukrainian VAT. It's a so-called Google tax, for example, that was introduced in the preceding years in Russian Federation, for example, and now Ukraine follows the EU, EU initiatives in, on this issue. But I would not, um, so in terms of the tax regime and the most pressing tax ramification, it all boils down to the elected business model, be it a R&D center in Ukraine or whether Ukraine is viewed as a target market, for example. But speaking of the, but as my colleagues said, the uh, on uh, 23rd of May, starting from 23rd of May this year, Ukraine moved to de-offshoreize its tax legislation and introduce the so-called anti-BAPS provisions into the domestic legislation. It may have a 
it may pose quite a challenges to the IT industry, both structured outside of Ukraine and uh, the IT investors looking to invest to enter Ukrainian market. For example, as of today, the um, the IT industry is predominantly structured as a co-working model in comparison to the standard model, whether the IT company in Ukraine would be employing individuals. And in this scenario, the tax burden would tax tax burden on payroll would amount as high as to 41.5%. But the number of companies, the number of IT companies in Ukraine employ the standard model for various reasons, though, be it uh, security purposes or data protection purposes or the requirements from their from their um, from their clients. But in contrast, as of today, the vast majority of the Ukrainian IT companies they employ the so-called co-working model, including also including also multinationals, where the Ukrainian IT company it contracts the so-called independent contractors in Ukraine, which are in turn subject to only 5% unified tax. This, is, this model presents quite a significant tax, tax incentive to the IT industry. And the, this model has been a status quo for a long time on the Ukrainian market, but as my colleagues right, rightly said, the government and the the government has recently moved, has recently presented an initiative to somehow move from this co-working model from utilizing independent contractors and moving to the DSCT virtual economic zone tax regime. I would cover it in a more detail in a, on the later slide on the next slide, but. Speaking of the tax reform, as I said, the so-called anti-BEPS provisions, which were designed to combat the so-called base erosion and profit shifting actions, they, according to this provision, Ukraine has introduced a number of novelties into the into its domestic legislation for example controlled foreign companies rules the constructive dividends rules and this this slide is named the risks of the tax reform but i would rather view it the tax reform and its challenges for the ukrainian it industry i shall i shall say that the owners of the ukrainian it industry they are the, uh, the majority of IT industry is compliant. They are, um, they are diligent in terms of their taxes. But from my personal experience, the structures that employed by the IT industry in Ukraine are not that quite sophisticated. And somehow they can be hectic. And this is the most this is the main challenge posed by the tax reform for example if the if the ukrainian it business is owned by the ukrainian resident then he would be subject to the so-called controlled foreign companies companies rules where he would be obligated to report the foreign companies under his control if the if for example this is the, on the left, this is just a snapshot of the maybe uh, the most uh, of the most easy model employed by the IT industry in Ukraine. And if, for example, the Ukrainian IT company were to be were to be dealing or providing outsourced R and D services to the sales company located in the client market in the target market, for example, Cyprus or the USA, which are quite the popular ones. The so-called, under the tax reform, the so-called 30% adjustment for corporate income tax purposes may kick in 
in terms of the transactions with residents of low tax jurisdictions and fiscally transparent entities. Also, the, the most pressing for the Ukrainian IT industry would be the update of the permanent establishment taxation rules. As I said, the, the so-called co-working model where the Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian IT company employs the IT individuals, it may be viewed as posing a permanent establishment risk for the for the for the foreign company employing in turn or utilize or contracting such a such individuals directly or indirectly through the Ukrainian IT company. And to conclude, I would say that there are different challenges posed by the tax reform, both on the personal level for the owners and on the personal level for the, for the potential investors, but as well on the corporate level for the Ukrainian IT company structured within the Ukrainian legal landscape. And um, I wouldn't view the reform as a as a quite as posing the quite high risk for the or po posing the uh, posing the impossible challenge, but I would suggest approaching it approaching the most the significant the recent novelties with a pinch of salt as and with the preparedness. Um, also, to conclude, I would like to cover the expected tax regime, which is proposed by the Ukrainian Ministry of Digital Transformation, while the ministry wants to move from the, from the indep independent contractors model, the ministry proposed the so-called DSCT virtual economic zone for the Ukrainian IT businesses, which will move, which will register to such a zone the ministry proposes the exit capital tax in 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 comparison to the 18% corporate income tax for the companies and the payroll tax for the IT specialists employed by such a companies to be as high as 10% as compared to the 41% tax burden for the employed individuals so i would closely the IT industry, as I know, they are quite in cooperation with the ministry. They have their, they have their arguments about, about some challenges posed by the proposed tax regime, and they are quite right in their, in their comments. So I would suggest following this, following this proposed development closely, and. Um, and and approaching the and approaching the developed the somewhat changed Ukrainian tax landscape with uh, sophistication and with a preparedness. And that is all from my side. If I would be happy to answer any questions later, I understand Katarina. So I would stop sharing right now and if any questions, please ask them. <clears throat> Thank you, Roman. Thank you for your presentation. Now, with the topic IT, I give the floor to our dear colleague Artemius Andreo. Mr. Artemius, take the floor. We cannot hear you. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see. Excellent. Good afternoon from my side. Uh, first of all, let me thank us for organizing this interesting discussion. And thank you, Katerina and Dennis, for moderating this. My name is Artemis Andreu, and I'm the business development manager of New Site Tech Business Solution, abbreviated as New Site Tech. New Site Tech uh, is the biggest system tech creator in Cyprus in terms of revenue, resources, and clients in the ICT sector. 
it's a very financial stable and robust company uh, and uh, we are recruiting more than 90 professional resources which 50 of them are highly skilled experienced certified engineers to the state of the art technology they offer to our customers let me give you some uh, some um, uh, the cyprus at glance uh, cyprus is integrated into the european single market and uh, enjoys market access to third countries through EU trade agreements. Moreover, Cyprus is, is strategically located at the crossroads of the European Union, Asia, the Middle East and Africa, allowing the country to promote itself as a business gateway between three continents. Cyprus is a member of the Eurozone since 2008. It has full access to European markets and access to 40 plus EU trade agreements. It has Europa's GDP growth and is one of the fastest growing EU economies. The legal system is closely aligned to the English common law legal system and frequently updated to meet investors' change need. It has in place one of the lowest corporate tax rates in the European Union at the rate of 12.5% and an attractive double tax triad network covering more than 60 countries. It has one of the best climates worldwide and is ranked as the top five safety country in the world. There is in place a wide range of services for starting and running a business easy and efficient. 55% of the workforce in Cyprus has a tertiary degree and businesses in Cyprus operate in English, while it's the 73% of the Cypriots that speak English. It has uh, the lower labor cost for technical and professional talents than in other uh, major EU countries and is among the lowest office rented rates in Europe. Uh, the information and communication technologies abbreviated ICT services sector is increasing, is increasing important to the growth of, that, of advanced economies. Cyprus authorities have identified ICT as a critical factor for improving competitiveness and raising economic growth. ICT services is a development sector in Cyprus with the turnover of the sector having growth from 1.1 billion in 2008 to more than 3.2 billion in 2018. Digitalization, which is a very uh, important aspect of the ICT services, uh, plays a central role uh, in for com competitiveness with investments in IC capital as a key driver of productive of productivity growth. Uh, as you can see on this slide, this is defines the ICT ecosystem in Cyprus, which is consists of the European Union bodies, uh, national public organizations, sector associations, universities, digital innovation hubs, incubators, and other support organizations in emerging and is boosting the development of the sector, allowing with the digital transformation journey. Cyprus is seen to have a considerable uh, potential as a digital hub able to exploit its edu educated workforce, develop infrastructure, business friendly environment and safe. Cyprus has adopted the digital strategy in 2012. The current digital strategy was updated in 2015 and 2018 to incorporate the e-government in, in order to be in line with the objectives and measures proposed in the digital agenda for Europe. The digital strategy aims to achieve the digital transformation of the public sector, to promote digital transformation of the private sector, and to enhance innovation in line with the country's level of digital maturity. In the beginning of this year, the President of the Republic of Cyprus appointed a Deputy Minister for Research, a Deputy Minister for Research Innovation and Digital Policy in order to ensure that the digital transformation will be monitored at the highest level and all the necessary strategies, technologies, infrastructures, and skills for digital transformation of the economy 
are interlocked with the research and infrastructure ecosystem as facilitating and enabling factors for, for knowledge sharing and innovate. The Deputy Minister uh, has defined four pillars of our strategy framework. is the implementation of horizontal and vertical projects, the well-known as the e-governments. We have seen the examples of the e-justice and e-health. Technical support and telecommunication structures, uh, as an example of that one is the 5G network development, is to upgrade the digital skills for the public sector and general population and, and the promotion of the culture of innovation and development and utilization of advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, blockchains, etc. Cyprus is progressing well in terms of the digital transformation journey. The adoption of the digital transform of the digital strategy for Cyprus and the appointment of the deputy minister for research, innovation and digital policy will accelerate the process and the activities in order to establish Cyprus as a digital hub in the era. As been stated in the last year, competitiveness report prepared by the European Commission with the collaboration of the Republic of Cyprus, the following five pillars must be followed and accomplished to ensure a holistic digital transformation. Assigning clear responsibilities for the implementation of the digital strategy in order to increase the effectiveness and efficiency of the, of the actual implementation. Accelerate the implementation of the, of the national digital strategy through short-term mandates with specific, clearly defined objectives and key performance indicators. Enhancing digital skills and addressing skills mismatch through universities, programs, through university programs, by promoting the, at the attractiveness of ICT services as a career path. Providing digitalization, in, digitalization incentives in the form of financial benefit allowances to companies in key sectors such as tourism, shipping, education. And finally, adopting a clear framework, rules, and condition for new innovative technologies, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud computing that will, will enhance the journey towards to the digital transformation of Cyprus. Many thanks. Thank you, Mr. Artemios. Thank you for your presentation. Well, uh, we are finished with the official parts. Now we have a chance to give all the audience to give their questions. We have already received a couple of them. There is one question addressed to um, Mr. Roman, I believe. I think uh, those three questions are to Mr. Roman because they were during uh, Mr. Roman's presentation and are connected to these IT issues. Uh, Roman, do you see chat or shall we read? Yeah, yeah, yeah I see it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I will answer them one by one. Uh, first of all, using USA, does it require also FATCO reporting as well? I I think I understand it's in connection with the um, with the snapshot of the model, which I uh, which was on my slide, and not necessarily FATCA is a FATCA is a mechanism obligating U.S. tax residents, obligating foreign banks to report accounts of U.S. tax residents to the firstly to the tax offices of the of the jurisdiction of the of the relevant jurisdictions and then to the IRS. So 
I would not, I, I wouldn't say it is immediately connected, uh, such a structure using the USA as a, using the USA company within the structure of the IT business. Uh, I would not say it is immediately connected to the FATCA reporting unless, unless there would be a US citizen, US tax resident as an investor or the, the ultimate beneficial owner to that end. And the second question would be, was on the, can you please elaborate on virtual IT economic zone and tax incentives that Ukrainian IT tax authorities are proposing? So in a nutshell, first and foremost, the Ukrainian, the, both the Ukrainian tax office and the labor service, they are quite eager to, to target the, they were historically eager to target the model where the uh, Ukrainian IT company employs, not, not employs, but contracts the so-called independent contractors. And there may be 50, 100, or even 1,000 of such contractors contracted by the Ukrainian IT company. And as I said, it poses uh, quite a risk in terms of reclassification such relationship into the employment ones from the employment perspective and into the permanent, such a, such a concept into the permanent establishment from a tax law standpoint. So what the ministry is proposing, the ministry proposes such IT businesses to register as the, as a resident of the Ukrainian of the virtual economic zone and then employ such contractors as employees on board them as employees in in turn in turn the ministry proposes to for the companies to to be subject to distributed profits tax instead of instead of the corporate income tax and for the individuals, for the IT specialists employed by such companies, residents of the DSCT economic zone, the ministry proposes to limit the tax burden, the personal tax burden for such employees as high as 10% instead of the 18% personal income tax and 1.5% military tax uh, that, the, that the employees are generally subject to. But the IT industry has its precautions in, in terms of this, uh, in terms of the suggested models, in terms of the, the IT industry argues, for example, that the, that the contractors should be employed, but the Ukrainian labor code is very much outdated because it was adopted in the Soviet era, era and if if the IT company were to onboard IT specialists as employees, such a such an IT company would not necessarily have the flexibility as it had under the contractor model because of the stringent regulation stringent labor regulation under the outdated labor code. So in a nutshell there is a tug of war between the ministry right now and the and the IT industry in terms of reaching the consensus reaching the amicable consensus which would help the IT industry to prosper further because the Ukraine IT industry is growing exponentially each year and i would say that the main main issue main focus would should not be should be not to hinder the development of the ukraine it industry and the potential investments uh, thank you roman thank you yeah. uh, one question to mrs alina from uh, another guest from another guest. Um, what is the situation about offering consultancy services on a project by project basis of specific time frame? It's 
yes, I guess it's a question, but I don't understand it's about what and consultancy of which services, about which projects we're talking about. If you can give me more details uh, about what, well, what you would like to get from my side. Well, I uh, believe. Yes. Can I can I give some further information since I posed the question? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, it is about giving uh, various consultancy services, mostly on improving productivity, quality of work, uh, management consultancy, and things like that. Um, as I said, on a specific time frame, not necessarily setting up a company in Ukraine, but um, um, do a job for several months, come back and perhaps go back again, but not necessarily setting up a company. Is that possible? I think this question more to Irina, uh, because she, she can um, suggest about how to do business in Ukraine. Uh, from her side, it is better to explain because I can explain it from the side of Cyprus right now. Mrs. Irina, can we get your uh, comments on the question? Mr. George, what I can tell you for now, uh, from those perspectives, what I know and uh, from those experience I had with Ukrainian law firms. So basically, if you want to provide some services to Ukrainian uh, companies over there, being a resident of Cyprus or any other uh, country to be non-resident of Ukraine, uh, you need first of all to get a work permit. This is very important because uh, it's like the same like we are coming to Cyprus, for instance, I'm coming to Cyprus on tourist visa and I will start providing but with experience, I will tell that I'm a lawyer, please come to me, I will give you some services. It will be uh, illegal here in Cyprus to do this. The same uh, um, is uh, in Ukraine. So basically, if you want to provide there any services, consultancy or whatever, you need to have um, basically what you need. In the case you have some other companies, and you are promoting yourself at a company here in Cyprus who will provide some services for individuals or for other companies, but you are not going to Ukraine and you are not giving the services over there. So in this case, you are still tax resident here in Cyprus and you are providing services in Cyprus. You don't need to have any permit, nothing. You can go to Cyprus. Uh, and stay there not more than for not more than three months, so not more than 90 days within six months, um, not to be a tax resident over here. You can go there and you can promote your services, but you can't provide them. So you can go for just like a business trip to meet with a client to tell them like, I will give you some services, I will provide you services, but from your company in Cyprus, yes, it is possible. But I know this. Thank you, Elena, for a very rich answer covering both countries. Um, well, there is next question. There is a question to Mr. Artemios uh, from Irina Monokovska. What is the best way for Ukrainian IT company to pitch Cyprus clients? So my company has 15 years of experience. Uh, in digital transformation for European companies, but we do not know anyone here. So what should be our starting point? Many thanks for your question. Uh, the first point that you can uh, get in touch and promote your services in Cyprus is, is through a local uh, uh, system integrator, uh, which offering services in the information, communication, and technology sector. Uh, you can uh, get my contact details from Dennis and, and Katerina. Uh, we can uh, discuss either with New SciTech or some other 
system integrity Cypress, how you can promote your services over there. As well, I would like to offer an, uh, services of a chamber, of course, but uh, our job is to connect the business community, the business uh, people in different industries of Cyprus and Ukraine. So, as Mr. Artemis mentioned, you can appeal to my email and we can get in contact and discuss the further uh, cooperation and help. Mrs. Katerina, do you, we have any more questions? Um, for now, I don't see any more questions in our chat, but we have a few minutes for our Q&A session, so I have a question to Mr. Rahman. Uh, recently, BE with other major business associations sent an official letter to the President of Ukraine proposing to jointly envision one quality document for further development of the industry rather than to multiply initiatives. In particular, it was asked to guarantee the possibility for IT companies uh, to freely and equally choose the forms of cooperation with IT specialists based on including agreements, uh, including agreements with uh, Forbes or by hiring IT specialists based on the uh, employment contract. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Roman, please tell us about the legal regime for those forms of cooperation in Ukraine and their advantages and disadvantages. Mm. Thank you, Katarina. Well, this is this is boils down to the first of all, it boils down to the whether the whether the IT businesses choose to operate under the employment model or under the independent contractor model, it it boils down to the of course to the tax aspect, but also to the flexibility aspect because as I said, the Ukrainian labor code is quite outdated, and given the specifics of the Ukrainian IT. Of the Ukraine of the IT industry, the Ukrainian IT companies, if they were to, the the argument is, if the IT special, if the majority of IT specialists were to be employed under the employment contracts, under the employment agreements, the the employer, the IT company, would not have much that much of a flexibility in terms of moving the IT specialist, assigning them to the different project teams and putting them on the bench, for example, if the if the project, if the client project is suspended, for example, or paused. For ex and the labor relations, the labor code we have right now, it does not provide such an opportunity as compared to the contractor model. So it, it, it all boils down to the flexibility of the businesses. There, are, there, are in, there is an, an, an initiative to finally to remodel and adopt the new labor code or the law on labor. And it would be very much beneficial if the labor, if the new labor code were to be adopted simultaneously with the any tax, any any regime proposed for the IT industry, but there are, of course, there are some realities in terms who are the stakeholders and who are the and who, in terms of the ministries, for example, who are responsible for the development of the any new regime for the IT industry, and in terms of developing the labor code, the new labor code. So, I hope this answers the main question. Thank you, Roman. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions from the audience? Well, I believe no, since our speakers covered the material in full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we have time, I have one last question to Irina Voivodina. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, on October uh, 2019, the law of Ukraine and amendments to certain legislative acts of Ukraine concerning the stimulation of investment activity of Ukraine entered into force. Uh, that the purpose of the document is to improve the investment climate of Ukraine and its uh, individual areas in accordance with the selected results of the comprehensive assessment of compliance with Ukrainian legislation and best practices described by the World Bank uh, Group in the method methodology. And uh, could you give a brief comment on the effectiveness of this law and its impact on investment uh, in Ukraine? What steps need to be taken in the field of legislation to improve the business climate in Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, uh, regarding this particular uh, law, uh, I cannot state uh, that uh, this law has a very big impact on uh, the business uh, climate in general. Uh, yes, uh, it just uh, covers and closes some gaps uh, in uh, uh, different uh, spheres of law and uh, relations, economic relations uh, that exist. Uh, for example, like uh, one uh, good uh, uh, example of uh, closing this gap uh, is uh, um, uh, the um, the step to secure uh, the uh, performance of obligations uh, by the parties uh, implementing instead of mortgage mortgage already exists yes uh, but also uh, securing such performance uh, uh, by transfer into trust ownership uh, of some property in order to secure and in such case uh, as an example um, if there is some financing in Ukraine or foreign bank uh, or other case and uh, so the uh, refund uh, could be secured, uh, the uh, property of the debtor could be transferred and in case of non-fulfillment of obligations, the bank can dispose of this property. Uh, so in the case of mortgage, it was not possible and now it is possible and it is uh, uh, in such case, uh, um, also in case of bankruptcy of the debtor, uh, this property is not included in the fund of, uh, uh, of this liquid uh, bankruptcy fund. So uh, again, uh, the creditor may dispose of uh, such property. Uh, there are also some other uh, gaps uh, and not gaps that uh, in uh, kind of in. Uh, make better the uh, climate, like using model uh, charters uh, in uh, companies. So these are um, actually details. Uh, as for your question, what could be made other forms? Well, I can say that the, there are enough reforms as for the moment. The, the main issue to change the climate is the dialogue uh, between business and uh, uh, controlling bodies and the state. Uh, because even now, uh, all our clients with this uh, uh, big uh, anti-offshore uh, law and other reforms, uh, the main issue that uh, uh, how will uh, the state bodies react and how they will check uh, the client's activity. Uh, so in this case, of course, uh, what business is waiting uh, is the change of approach, the improvement of approach of state bodies. Uh, yes, so uh, we could move forward together, state and business, uh, uh, with these uh, changes. And uh, uh, the business is ready to change, actually. Uh, no one is saying that no, uh, the, the way it was, it was no. Uh, the business wants to stay in Ukraine. <laughs> Let's be sincere, yes. And uh, of course, with these changes, uh, there should be some uh, steps of uh, uh, forgiving the taxes, uh, the amnesty, amnesty, yes. Uh, and uh, this will make this uh, synergy between uh, state and business, and that will be the way it will be. <laughs> so this is it. Thank you, Rina. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're out of time and maybe it would be the last comment for today.
uh, we are grateful to the event partners for this initiative and its realization, namely to the Embassy of Cyprus in Ukraine, the Embassy of Ukraine in Cyprus, a Cyprus Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and surely for our speakers and all the participants for sharing your time and expertise with us today. Uh, so, Denise, I think we shall close our successful cooperation for today. <laughs> Yes, uh, as well on, on uh, my behalf as well, I would like to thank everyone once again from on, on behalf of Cyprus Chambers uh, Commerce and Industry and Cyprus Ukraine Business Association and European Business Association of Southern Ukrainian Region. Uh, well, I hope everyone got a good insight on the business opportunities of both countries. Uh, whoever needs any more information, he can um, contact the both associations, like as European Business Association in Ukraine and the uh, Cyprus Ukrainian uh, Business Association in Cyprus or Chamber of Commerce of Cyprus. And we will provide you with all the data and help we, we can. So thank you, everyone. Have a good evening and goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.